uh, I greet you all in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So uh, this evening, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a privilege for every one of us to uh, come together and uh, uh, listen to the word of God. And especially uh, uh, as we are learning uh, from the book of Revelation, uh, first of all, uh, let me tell you one thing that uh, 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 we have, we want to thank God for giving this opportunity. You know, there are many people, uh, those who are not having this opportunity to, uh, I mean, uh, have this Bible study of uh, Book of Revelation, uh, but uh, uh, God has given us and provided us uh, this wonderful, <coughs> I mean, Bible study, and uh, we are gathering together for this, and uh, let us give thanks unto the Lord for giving this good opportunity. And also, uh, uh, first of all, let me tell you one thing that uh, uh, we must be sitting in the presence of God uh, with a prayerful attitude uh, as we are trying to understand the toughest book of, uh, of uh, New Testament. You know, when uh, Cedric was praying, uh, he was just praying that, oh, Lord, this uh, book is a toughest book and uh, it is very hard to understand. Oh, Lord, we need your wisdom and we need your understanding to I mean, go through the portions that we are discussing. So let us uh, sit in the presence of God with that I mean, attitude of prayer so that uh, I mean, we will be able to understand uh, what the Lord or the Holy Spirit is I mean, written uh, in, the, in the book of I mean, Revelation. You know, uh, the, the, the heading of uh, uh, this book is uh, going like this. I mean, the topic is like this. Uh, the book of Revelation and eschatology. The book of Revelation and eschatology. I request everyone to uh, uh, have a notebook or uh, your, if you are noting down in your uh, uh, um, laptop or uh, mobile phone, whatever it may be, you have to note it down because I'll be asking some questions maybe uh, after the class or the next class. Okay, so you have to take it down uh, all the notes. So you will, uh, you can see that uh, the main points in the screen. So it is very easy for you to, I mean, take it down because uh, I'll be asking some questions after the classes. So we have to be uh, very, very, very ready to, I mean, uh, listen to the word of God and also to uh, uh, note it down. And uh, one more thing I want to uh, tell you before I uh, enter into that, uh, I mean, introduction of book of study. Um, you know, remember, Satan will not allow you to sit or concentrate. Uh, there will be many obstacles and uh, disturbances and distractions. Uh, but remember, be serious and try to avoid all unnecessary things. You know, Satan never uh, will never allow you to listen. I mean, uh, will never allow you to concentrate to the book of the, the study of this book. Uh, the reason is uh, there are many things written about the uh, destruction of Satan in this book. So that's a, that's the main reason that uh, there will be some obstacles and disturbance in your studies. You know, you have to, I mean, get away of all those things and uh, try to avoid all the uh, unnecessary things and uh, be concentrated to these, uh, I mean, uh, points. And uh, as we are, I mean, uh, going through uh, this study, that uh, God will uh, illuminate your understanding and your mind to understand what is written in the book of Hebrews. So um, today, maybe today and one more class, uh, maybe two classes I'll be I mean, going through the introduction uh, for the uh, book of Revelation and uh, the, the eschatological studies and all. Okay, so uh, the main topics that we are going to deal with in this study, the main topics that we are going to deal with study uh, there are uh, mainly 10 uh, topics that we are going to I mean, learn. So we will be just covering all those 10 uh, topics mainly. And uh, under that, uh, uh, there will be uh, many other uh, subtopics also. So the main topics that uh, we are going to deal with is the, the first one will be the introduction uh, to the book of Revelation. The introduction to the book of Revelation. The introduction to the book of Revelation. So that is going to be uh, uh, from uh, chapter one, uh, verses uh, uh, one through eight. 
introduction to the book of revelation is the one topic one main topic so if i say these things and you know that 10 points that that will be easy for you to uh, uh, get it very very clearly in the coming uh, days of the class so the, the first point the first topic is introduction to the book of revelation chapter 1 verses uh, 1 through 8 and the second topic is vision of the son of man vision of the son of man vision of the son of man that is from chapter 9 verses 9 sorry chapter 1 verses 9 through 20 chapter 1 verses 9 through 20 <laughs> third topic is letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor. That is going to be from chapter 2, verses 1 through chapter 3, verse 22. Once again, chapter 2, verse 1 through chapter 3, verse 22. So listen, in the first point, the introduction to the book of Revelation, we'll be discussing uh, something from, uh, uh, from the, the, the uh, chapter 1, the first portion, that revelation of Jesus Christ and greetings are there, greetings to the seven chapters, everything is out there. And the second point, second topic will be vision of the Son of Man. That is from chapter 1, uh, uh, verses 9 through 20. Uh, that is going to be uh, that, uh, I mean, uh, Apostle John was receiving uh, many uh, visions about, uh, I mean, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, or the Son of Man. So that is going to be included in that topic. And thirdly, you know, uh, Paul, uh, Apostle John was writing these uh, letters uh, to uh, the seven churches in Asia Minor. So we will be discussing uh, what are the points that it is written in uh, in uh, that I mean uh, letters uh, for the seven churches. How many of you know what, which are the seven churches in Asia Minor, which is which is mentioned in the in the book of Revelation? Ephesus, Ephesus, Smyrna. Pergamum, Pergamum, Thetaira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and the Laodicea. Philadelphia and Laodicea. Once again, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thetaira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. Fourth topic. Fourth topic. That is from. Uh, that is uh, you know uh, we have uh, written the, the third point up to chapter three verse twenty two. But uh, uh, starting is this the fourth four topic is starting from chapter four all through the chapters. You know down to the chapters. Uh, it is not. Uh, I mean I'm not giving any. Uh, I mean uh, verses or chapter, but uh, 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 all these uh, topics will be covered by. The, uh, the chapters uh, from chapter 4 uh, till 22. So the fourth uh, I mean, point is seven seals, oh my, seven trumpets, and seven veils of wrath. Seven seals, seven trumpets, seven veils of wrath. Here Mudragal. Yed Kakalangal Yed Krodha Kalashangal Seven Seals, Seven Trumpets, and Seven Bales of Wrath. Topic number five. Topic number five Second Coming of Jesus Christ. 
second coming of Jesus Christ. Topic number six, the rapture of the church. The rapture of the church. Topic number seven, tribulation period. Tribulation period. Topic number eight. Topic number eight, millennial kingdom. Millennial kingdom. That is in chapter 20. Chapter 20, Millennial Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Topic number nine. New heaven and new earth. New heaven and new earth. That is in chapter 21. Chapter 21. Topic number 10, topic number 10, the eternity, the eternity that is in chapter 22, that is in chapter 22. So I believe you already got uh, the main topics that we are going to focus in the study of uh, book of revelation and also in eschatology eschatology means uh, the study of uh, the last events the future events okay the study of the last events or the future events is known as the eschatology okay uh, you know i've been just uh, i mean uh, giving you the main topics and of course there will be uh, many other uh, subtopics that we are going to deal with but these are the main topics we are trying to cover in this study of a uh, uh, book of Revelation and eschatology. I mean, of course, there are many, many subtopics. Uh, no worries. Uh, uh, on the way, we will be just discussing all those things. But I, I was just giving a nutshell of the study of the book of uh, Revelation. And also, uh, we will be referring the book of Daniel sometimes. We'll be referring to the book of Daniel sometimes uh, uh, when we are going through the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation uh, has a close connection with uh, uh, many areas of book of Daniel. You know, there are many connections with the book of Revelation and book of Daniel. So we'll be sometimes referring and we'll be reading some of the verses from uh, book of Daniel as we uh, move on. And, uh, uh, you know, when I was uh, uh, saying to the people that, okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ready and I'm willing to take the classes from, uh, uh, from the book of Revelation uh, in the upcoming days, uh, many people were just uh, very eagerly waiting to start the class. And uh, uh, they were I mean, telling me, okay, uh, Pastor, when are you uh, going to start the book of Revelation? So we want to uh, study from book of Revelation. We want to know many things. Uh, from uh, book of revelation and uh, let me ask you are you curious and eagerly waiting to study from this book hello are you curious are you curious and eagerly waiting to study from the book of revelation okay 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 very good and uh, let me know what are the reasons of uh, your curiosity i know i i know that uh, you are so curious about uh, uh, studying from the book of Revelation and let me know from you that uh, what are the reasons and why you are so curious about studying the book of uh, uh, Revelation. Uh, you have, have any answer? Did I say something? Did not. Uh, can you hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so for me, like uh, uh, never heard any preacher preaching from Revelation. It's always been a mystery. 
So I, I'm curious just to see uh, what is there in, in Revelation. So okay. that, that's the reason. So, and, and we have been reading all the epistles, all the gospels, but when it comes to Revelation, it's really difficult to understand. So I'm just curious what uh, it really uh, talks about. Yes. Anything else? Why you people are curious and why you people are just eagerly waiting for this study? Any other reasons? Okay, let me tell you one thing, you know, uh, many people think that, uh, yeah. Mama? Yeah. No, I was saying, you know, it says on the verse three, blessed are those who read this and study it, hear it and waiting for the Christ. The same, blessed are the people who reads and study this, he says in the verse three. Yeah, blessed are the people who just read and uh, hear and obey the, the words which is written in that book. That's very nice and uh, as uh, I mean uh, George also said you know uh, it is the, you know many people are always reading and uh, uh, I mean teaching from uh, the officials and the gospels but uh, this is a this is a, it's a rare thing that you are getting a chance to read the book of Revelation and to study from that book and you know many people think that this book is uh, very hard to understand um, only the only the theologians or only the scholars uh, can understand the meaning and the mysteries which is asked i mean uh, george said that uh, there are many mysteries in the book of revelation uh, but let me tell you one thing uh, of course there are many uh, mysteries in the book of revelation which we cannot understand at the same time uh, it is not open for only for the theologians or the scholars, but it is open. The plain meaning of the book of Revelation is open for the simple meaning for the believers. I mean, this book also is written for the believers. I mean, this book is written for the people of God, the children of God. So God will enable us and God will, I mean, strengthen us and the Holy Spirit will help us to understand the mysteries of the word of God, especially from the book of Revelation. I mean, so let me tell you one thing. Uh, the curiosity of the people is based on two things, mainly. Number one, to know the future events. To know the future events. You know, people are always thinking about what is going to happen in future. What is going to happen in future? You know, uh, okay, what is going to happen for the human being in future? Eh? Uh, what is going to happen with the world or for the universe? Or what is going to happen with the church? Or what is going to happen for the wicked people? And how God is going to judge the wicked people and uh, uh, where the, the children of God, where the believers are going? What is the reality of the heaven and what is the reality of hell? And when Jesus Christ is coming and the second coming of Jesus Christ, what, when it is going to happen? And when anti, anti Christ is coming? Okay, and, uh, uh, and some people want to know who is the anti Christ? Who is the anti Christ? Okay, uh, and uh, something, some people are just thinking about. Uh, what is the reality of the chip with the 666 666 the number okay the chip with 666 so people are always worried about all these things they want to know all these things and what is going to happen if you are in future for the world and universe and church and wicked people and the people of god and what is who is anti christ and who is jesus christ and when jesus christ is coming all these things People are worried about all these things and even the believers, the believers of the church, they are confused about many things and what is going to happen. And currently, currently, what is the problem? The COVID-19. Is it? 
COVID-19 or uh, the coronavirus. So the people are just I mean, trying to discover what is the reason of that and what is going to happen for the, for, for the world and the people and uh, when is it going to be end. So these all things mixed together and the people are so curious about studying from the book of Revelation. But let me tell you one thing. When we got through the book of Revelation and eschatological portions of the subjects, we have to understand one thing. God's presence is with us and the Holy Spirit will enable every one of us to understand the plain meaning of the word of God. The plain meaning of the word of God. You know, when you thoroughly study about the book of Revelation, you will understand one thing. There are many mysteries that the that our intellectual power, intellectual capacity can uh, cannot understand. You know, uh, you know, I I don't have any answer for the reason of the COVID nineteen and when it is going to be end and uh, what is the uh, what is the I mean uh, last time of the COVID nineteen or what is going to happen in that uh, for the people. I don't have any answer for that from the Bible. But at the same time. We have some answers from the Bible, especially from the book of Revelation, regarding all these things. These things will be happening in and around, so that is written in Bible. But we are going to look into the plain meaning of the mysteries of the book of Revelation. So let us pray to the Lord, O oh Lord, help us to understand, help us to go through the portions, and when we are going through the portion, help us to uh, understand all those things and uh, I mean, uh, we need the help of the Holy Spirit to understand all those things. And now we come to the next, uh, I mean, uh, next thing that is the order of the book. The order of the book. So at present, we are just, I mean, trying to uh, uh, go through some of the, uh, some of the introductory part of the book of Revelation. And uh, after maybe one or two classes, we'll be entering into chapter one. So now we are going to uh, think about the order of the book, the order of the book. There is no doubt that this book is written by Apostle John, who was a contemporary and disciple of Jesus Christ. Um, it is very sure and it is very clear that Apostle John wrote this letter or wrote this prophetical book of Revelation. I mean, uh, we know who is Apostle John, and uh, uh, there are many references in the Bible. You know, uh, you can you can you can prove that that John Apostle John is a, uh, a writer or author of this book from chapter one, verse one. It says like this: "The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his born servants the things which must soon take place, and he sent and communicated it." by angels to his born servant john and again verse 9 says like this john i john your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and preservance which are in jesus was on in this island of island called Patmos, because of the word of god and the testimony of jesus and in the last chapter chapter 22 verse 8 22 verse 8 it says that i john am the one who heard and saw these things and when i heard and saw i fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed me these things i mean so it is very clear that apostle john is the writer or the author of the book of revelation and you have a homework you have a homework so you can you can just note it down the homework and the homework is like this what you know about apostle john from bible what you know about apostle john from bible so now you're listening the word of god listening about the book of revelation but i'm giving this homework and next class you have to write it down something and bring it and we will uh, one one person or two person can uh, 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 just uh, explain all those things, you know, what you understand about Apostle John from Bible, especially from New Testament. 
that is the common. Okay, that's all. So come back. So we are just thinking about the, the author of uh, this book. It is believed that John was 89 years old. You, if you want to write it down, those points, you can write it down. Uh, that may not be coming in the in the screen. So when John, I mean, uh, you know, it is believed, you know, it is not written that uh, uh, in the 89th year. Only you so many. Somebody speaking. Okay, you can mute yourself and uh, then you can speak. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, it is believed. Okay, it is not written in Bible that. Uh, in the in in 89th year old man uh, uh, was a uh, man uh, writing this epistle but uh, so this prophetical book but uh, it is believed uh, history historically it is believed that john was 89 years old elderly elderly man uh, while he was exiled or banished to the island of patmos patmos like nadu kadathapedumbol yohanan 89 vayasu undayirunnu anna vishwasikkapadunnu so when he was exiled or banished to the island of Patmos, uh, 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 it was, I mean, he was uh, 89 years old, elderly man. And uh, it was during the time of Roman Emperor Domitian, D-O-M-I-T-I-A-N, D-O-M-I-T-I-A-N, Domitian. So it was, it was in the time or rule of the Roman Emperor Domitian that uh, Apostle John was banished or exiled uh, or sent to the island of Patmos. You know, uh, he was arrested by the uh, Roman government uh, while he was ministering in Ephesus. He was arrested by the go Roman government while he was uh, ministering in Ephesus. Uh, again, history says like this that he had to go through uh, many persecutions. This Apostle John had to go through many uh, persecutions, like uh, uh, once he was thrown into the burner of boiled oil. Once he was thrown into the burner of boiled oil. But he was, uh, I mean, uh, delivered and escaped from uh, all those turmoil, and then he was banished to the island of Patmos. So he was, I mean, uh, thrown into the burner of the boiled oil, but nothing happened with him. So that is the history says, you know, John uh, had to go through that persecution, but nothing happened. He was just delivered from there and escaped from that turmoil. And then after that, he was banished to, to the island of Patmos by the emperor Domitian. So while he was uh, and staying in, in a cave or the, or the, or the tunnel, uh, he received money, uh, dreams and visions uh, uh, and revelations from God about Jesus and also about seven churches in Asia Minor and the eschatological prophecies. So listen, so when he was banished to the Pat I mean, island of Patmos, uh, there, is, there is a cave, there is a particular cave in the, in the island of Patmos and there is, a, there is a tunnel. So when he was sitting inside the cave, now he he received many dreams and revelations from God about many things. Like uh, he got a vision about the the, the 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 Son of Man, means Jesus Christ. So he got the vision and the dream and the revelation about God and Jesus, and also he got many revelations about uh, 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 the situation of the seven churches in Asia Minor. So how those people are going through and how those people. Uh, suffering and what are the troubles and what are the persecutions that uh, uh, the believers and the ministers of uh, seven churches in Asia Minor are suffering. And he got the revelation from, from God. And also he got many visions about the eschatological prophecies. The eschatological prophecies means uh, uh, what is going to happen in future. So that is what we read from uh, chapter, chapter uh, maybe four. Yeah, chapter uh, four onwards, we will be uh, looking into that. Up to chapter three, uh, uh, everything is written about the revelation and the letter for the seven churches in Asia Minor. At the same time, from chapter four, 
we understand that uh, there are many, I mean, eschatological uh, events going to happen, take place, or uh, like uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ and tribulation and millennial kingdom and the new heaven and new earth and uh, the rapture of the church and all those things. I mean, so we'll be discussing all those things later. But let us come, come back to that point that this is written by Apostle John. I mean, he was banished from Ephesus, arrested from Ephesus and banished to, to uh, uh, the island of uh, I mean, uh, Patmos. Okay, now we come to the uh, place of writing. The place of writing. That means we are just, I mean, going to think about uh, uh, the, the island of Patmos. The place of writing. You know, I'm just uh, explaining all those things because without knowing the introduction, because without knowing the background, uh, it is very hard to, I mean, understand why uh, John was receiving these visions and why he is writing these letters to the seven churches and all those things. So we have to understand what is the uh, background and context of the book of Revelation. So now we go to the place of writing. The place of writing is very clear. There is no doubt at all, it is the island of Patmos. The island of Patmos. The island of Patmos is in Greece. The island of Patmos is in Greece. It is said that there are around 2,000 islands in Greece. There are around 2,000 islands in Greece. This may be a question for the next class. There are around 2,000 islands in Greece. Even in these 2,000 islands, only in 200 islands, there are people staying. I told you there are 2,000 islands or around 2,000 islands in Greece. And in these 2,000 islands, there are only 200 islands where people are staying. People are staying. But the island of Patmos, the, the island of Patmos, during the time of the Roman Empire, the government used to send criminals as prisoners. You know, the Roman government, or the, 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 the Roman Empire, they were always sending the criminals as prisoners to the island of Patmos. So this island was just like a jail from which no one could escape. If somebody is banished or if somebody is exiled to the island of Patmos, those people cannot escape from that place. That much lonely it is and there is nobody to support and there is nobody to help. There is nobody to uh, 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 speak to the person and uh, the, the history says and scholar says that okay, in, in, in island of Patmos there are many skulls and the bones of the people uh, those who were uh, already banished from different places to the, uh, the, the island of Patmos so when uh, Apostle John was just I mean, entering into that island uh, there was nobody and he was just seeing only the skulls and the I mean bones of the people that already uh, they were banished to uh, island of Patmos. So it was a dangerous place and there he was staying. Now the present picture of uh, Patmos uh, I'll try to uh, display it in the in the screen. The present picture of uh, uh, Patmos. Now you can see that uh, a picture now in the screen that is the present picture of the island of Patmos. The present picture of the island of Patmos. But in those days, it was not like that. In those days, that means during the time that Apostle John was banished to Patmos, it was not the situation. There was nothing. There was only one cave, or you can call it as a tunnel. But at present, this is the situation. Okay, at present, this is a situation. We'll go through that. Now, Patmos was a 
what you know I, I'll, I'll give you uh, a small idea about uh, uh, the, the island of Patmos. Patmos was a small island and it was a rocky place. It was a small island and it was a rocky place. The island of Patmos is 50 miles away from the coast of the Turkey. Turkey is the place name. So uh, the, the island of Patmos is 50 miles away from the coast of Turkey and surrounded by waters. Surrounded by waters. So this is the this is a small explanation about the island of Patmos. <clears throat> Again, the cave in which he was receiving the visions is presently modified and renovated and decorated and named as the cave of Apocalypse. You know, I told you that Apostle uh, John was receiving <clears throat> history says, okay, that is not written in Bible, history says. And the scholar says that John, because John was receiving all the visions from God while he was sitting inside the cave, while he was sitting inside the cave. And that cave, okay, uh, that cave, the, you, can, you can see the I mean, a present uh, situation, the present cave uh, is, will be there in the screen now. So uh, this, okay, this is the, is the screen. Okay, this is the I mean, cave that in which uh, uh, Apostle John was sitting and he was I mean, receiving the visions and writing the uh, book. Okay, at, but at present, this is the present I mean, uh, situation of the cave. Okay, so in those days, it was not like that. It was, it was a dangerous place. So what happened? So, uh, so at present, it is modified and it is renovated and uh, when, uh, clearly, uh, when beautifully decorated and uh, uh, named as the Cave of Apocalypse. The name of the cave is Apocalypse. Apocalypse is a Greek word uh, for the revelation. Apocalypse is the Greek word for revelation. That is the cave of revelation. The cave of apocalypse means the cave of revelation. And that cave and that tourist place is still open for the tourists and it's a place of pilgrimage. Now, in those days, Apostle John was, I mean, very much troubled in sitting inside the cave and he was receiving the visions in the day, in the, in the, the day of God. And also he was writing all the, I mean, book, sorry, letters and the prophetical visions in a, in a book. And now what happened? Okay, the government have made everything, decorated everything, and this is a tourist place now. And it's a, it's a place of pilgrimage and usually many Pilgrims, pilgrims are visiting that place. I mean, nowadays, and that 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 cave is there. Okay, then uh, history says in AD 96. Okay, uh, uh, Domitian. So uh, we are just I mean going through the uh, the, the date of the uh, uh, date and the uh, uh, the place of writing. So uh, actually, the the history says in AD 96, Domitian died. Domitian was the person, uh, the emperor who banished or exiled uh, Apostle John to, to Patmos. And he died in AD 96. Domitian died in AD 96. The next Roman emperor after Domitian was Nerva. Nerva. N E R V A. N E R V A. <clears throat> Domitian was the was the emperor while uh, John was exiled. Then after the death of Domitian, Domitian died in 96 AD, and after the death of Domitian, uh, uh, the ro next Roman emperor was Nerva, Nerva, N-E-R-V-A, Nerva. And in his period, the history says that John was released from Patmos and came back to Ephesus. There is no biblical reference for this, but is from history. History says that in his time, in the time of the Emperor Nerva, uh, John was released from Patmos and came back to Ephesus. And another thing, there is no reference in Bible when John died or John died. It, 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 there is no reference in Bible about the death of uh, Apostle John. <clears throat> 
historically there are many things happening and there are many opinions but there is no uh, clear evidence from the bible about the death of uh, john now the next uh, uh, point we are going to discuss is readers of the book the readers of the book the readers of the book uh, there is no doubt that the readers of this book is primarily are the seven churches of asia minor primarily the readers of this book are the seven churches of asia minor which i already mentioned about It is primarily only for the seven churches. At the same time, this letter was written for a common purpose for all the believers. Okay, even after the time of Apostle John, even after the time of the first century, the the the, the next centuries, uh, all the Christians are reading from this book and they are getting encouraged and they are getting the the freedom from that book and. When they are reading the book, they are getting comforted and uh, they are so happy to read the book and to understand the book. So that's what we understand. It was primarily written for only for the seven churches in Asia Minor. At the same time, it is a common book which is written for all the Christians, those who are living in all the ages or all the periods. Okay. So the book of Revelation was written. Next one is book of the the the, the date of or the date of writing. Can say the date of writing. The book of Revelation was written towards the end of the first century AD. The book of Revelation was written towards the end of the uh, first century AD. It is believed that almost during the time of AD 89 to 96, in that period, in between AD 89 to 96, in between that period. Uh, uh, Apostle John wrote this book of Revelation. Now, the purpose of the book, the purpose of the book, the purpose of the book. <clears throat> the first purpose, the first purpose is to be ready for the coming of Jesus, to be ready for the coming of Jesus. To be ready for the coming of Jesus. So remember, when we study about the book of Revelation, the first purpose for us is to be ready for the coming of Jesus. Not only to get some knowledge, intellectual knowledge or something, we are not reading or we are not studying the book of Revelation only to get some knowledge. No, no never. It is to, to, to be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. So how many of you know that uh, uh, before we go to the purpose of the book, uh, let, me, let me know something. How many, how many books are there? Books are written by Apostle John in the New Testament. Somebody can unmute and you can speak. How many books are written by Apostle John in five? Five. It is very clear because already we discussed. Five books are written by Apostle John. Which one? The Gospel of John. The Gospel of John. Okay. And John. there are three epistles. Epistles. First is. First John, second John, third John, very good. And, uh, and prophetical, Revelation. And prophetical book called Book of Revelation. Okay. So remember, when you go to the purpose of the book, you have to think about what was the purpose and the theme of the Gospel of John. So Apostle John wrote the first book that is called the Gospel of John. Okay. So why or what was the reason and what was the purpose of that book and what is the theme of that book 
it was so that you may believe so that you may believe so that you may believe that is the theme of the book of john or gospel of john so that you may believe what to believe what to believe what john was saying what to believe that is jesus is god and he is the substantial atonement for our sin and through believing we may have life it is written in john chapter 20 verse 31 john chapter 20 verse 31 you know um 20 verse 31 i will read for you um but these have been written so that you may believe that jesus is christ the son of god and that believing you may have life in his name remember john apostle john wrote his first book the gospel of john with a purpose that you that you may be you may believe you may be believe okay what to believe that written that you may believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing you may have life in his name amen so that's what we understand from gospel of john and we have to believe something that jesus christ is the atonement for our sin and through believing in jesus christ we may have life okay and 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 uh, uh, other the three epistles are written uh, with a purpose three epistles are written by a purpose what is that to be assured to be assured to be assured what assurance what assurance the assurance of salvation the assurance of salvation assurance of justification the assurance of sanctification the assurance of eternal life the assurance of salvation assurance of justification assurance of sanctification and the assurance of eternal life you know when you go through the, the three epistles which was written by apostle john we will be i mean uh, we will be just studying about all those things you know uh, he was i mean making the people to be assured about something to be assured about something that is the purpose of uh, apostle john <clears throat> when he was writing the <clears throat> epistles and he was always talking about okay the assurance of salvation you have to have this assurance of salvation and you have to have the salvation and justification sanctification eternal life and all those things okay so that is the main purpose of uh, the the books or the epistles written by john now the book of revelation was written with the purpose the purpose of the book of revelation was to be ready or to be prepared to be ready or to be prepared to be ready or to be prepared ready for what ready for what for the return of christ for the return of christ you know you have to think about one thing that first century church and the first century believers was always ready for his coming you know jesus before his ascension he said i will come soon i will come soon okay so those people were just waiting for the second coming of jesus christ because they believed that jesus who promised that he is going to come soon will come surely the first century believers okay all those people all the churches and all the believers and all the pastors they were always ready and that's what we read in uh, acts chapter 2 3 and onwards you know all those people were eagerly waiting for the second coming of jesus christ and they were all selling their property and, uh, and they were putting all the i mean wealth uh, and, uh, at the at the feet of apostles so they were always waiting for the second coming of jesus christ okay so they were not only waiting for his coming but they were prepared to be caught up 
with Christ. They were preparing themselves. So this evening, as we are going through this book, as we are just taking a note about this book, let me ask you one thing. That I know that we all are expecting the second coming of Jesus Christ. We all are expecting the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we all are waiting for the second coming of Jesus Christ. But the question is like this. Are you ready? Are you preparing yourself for the second coming of Jesus Christ? If not, your waiting is absolutely wasted. It is vain. But we are not only, the, the first century believers, they were not only waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ, but they were always ready to be and prepared to, to, for, the, for the coming of Jesus Christ. That's what we understand from the I mean, uh, first century history, like uh, uh, from the book of Acts. The second purpose of this book is to encourage the ministers and believers of those churches encourage the ministers and believers of those churches. To encourage the ministers and believers of those churches. Why? Why? Because they were going through many persecutions. Okay. During the time of Nero and the Nero, the Roman Emperor, and also during the time of uh, I mean, Domitian, the Roman Emperor, the next Roman Emperor. Uh, in, in the time of all those emperors, they were going, the, the believers were going through the difficult situation. They were going through the persecutions. So here, John is trying to, Apostle John is trying to encourage those people and the ministers of the churches and the believers to be to be to be strong, to be firm in faith. Even though you are going through the persecution, do not be worried about anything. God's presence is with you, and there is a purpose about your life, and there is a there is a clear purpose ab about your life for God. So God will do the miracles in your ministry. So that's what here uh, Apostle John is trying to encourage the ministers and the believers when they were going through the persecutions. Thirdly. The next, uh, uh, next uh, 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 point, the next purpose, you can call it as a, to face the challenges. Face the challenges. To face the challenges. What challenges? Now, those people were having many challenges in their life. You have to understand one thing. Many people were converted from the Jewish background, Jewish religion to the Christianity. And some of the people were converted from the uh, Gentile background to the Christian community. Okay, Christian faith. You can call it just like that. So there are many challenges. You know, the people, those who are converted from the Jewish religion, they are going through many troubles. And uh, the, other, the other people, other Jewish people are mocking them and uh, they are, uh, I mean, commending uh, something about these people and... Uh, they are saying that it's a shameful thing that you left the Jewish religion, the, the, the prominent Jewish religion, and went to the Christianity. There is nobody to care about you. But these people were, were facing the challenges. So John, Apostle John, through the with the Holy Spirit and with the power of the Holy Spirit and with the visions that he received, he is, I mean, I mean, encouraging the people that you have to face the challenges. There are many challenges in the Christian faith. And you have to face all the challenges and God will help you. So that is, that is one of the purpose of writing these epistles or writing these letters to the I mean, churches. And the next purpose is to defend from the false teachings. To defend them from the false teachings. To defend from false teachings. You know, even in the first century itself, there were many, there were many false teachings that came into the church. Especially when you study about, uh, I mean, Corinthian churches and everything. <clears throat> and even, uh, even uh, when you study about, uh, we, were, we were studying about the book of Hebrews. 
sorry. We were studying about the book of Hebrews. Even there also it is written, there were many persecutions and there were many people who just I mean, uh, are coming inside the church and they were teaching the, 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 the another gospel and another Jesus and many other things. You know, false teachings, false teachings. So, Apostle John is trying to, I mean, make them, make them clear and make them, uh, I mean, equipped how to defend from the false teachings. That is the one of, that is one of the uh, purposes of, I mean, Apostle John. The next purpose is the importance of letters, the importance of letters and epistles. <laughs> The importance of letters and epistles. So that point we will we will discuss maybe in the next class. The importance of the letters or the epistles. But that have one more one more homework. One more homework. That is. The order of the New Testament books. The order of the New Testament books. Everyone should know that. At least the New Testament. Old Testament you leave it. If you do not know. You have to study that. But at least when we go through the book of Revelation, we will go through the all the books of the of the New Testament. So we have to know about the order of the New Testament books. So I'll be asking this to two or three persons in the next class. I don't know who is that person. It's not for the kids, not only for the kids, maybe, maybe asking to the kids also. Okay, not only for the kids, but also for all the people. I'll be just picking one person and we'll be asking you say. The order of the books of the notice so that is going to happen next class so let's come back to those points and let us conclude the classes of today and we will pray amen